Hey everyone, I'm here after uh, 50 hours of operating this uh, mini excavator that I bought on Alibaba and I just figured I'll give you guys an update of the 10 things that uh, have either broken or annoyed me so far. So for the number one, which uh, is the hydraulic motors for each track down in here, they're behind this shield. They started leaking, both of them. One was about 15 hours in, the other one uh, on the other side here was about uh, 20 hours in. So to fix it, it's fairly easy. Unscrew three screws and uh, replace an O-ring that you can get at your local auto supply store for about 65 cents. But it just feels like that should not be necessary after you know 20 hours of operation. In combination with number one and number two, I had to replace a lot of uh, hydraulic fluid as I had leaked out while driving. So I bought uh, this hydraulic fluid right here, which was recommended. It is $94.44 at uh, Walmart. Number two is a failed O-ring underneath the reservoir for the hydraulic fluid. It uh, was installed incorrectly, so it was cut when the lid was put on and tightened down. I had to get a five pack from Granger for that one. It cost me $11.25. For number three, we come to these levers for motoring backwards and forwards. They, when I first got it, they did not match up. So when you push them forward, they did not go at the same distance forward as they would go back. It was as simple as getting the carpet out of the way, but I had to then remove the foot pedal for the thumb get the carpet out of the way, unscrew down here, unscrew one on the other side, and then there's some manual adjustments in there. It just really should have been done during quality control uh, at the factory. Number four is this window right here. They mounted the top track and the bottom track or channel too um, close or too far apart. So there's too much movement in the glass up and down so the glass could fall out. I tried a few different things by getting uh, the, the channel off so I could lower it down, but this whole thing is glass, so I was afraid of cracking it. So instead what I did was just get some silicone and fill the gap on the bottom with some silicone, and that made it so that it now slides, but it's no longer a large enough gap to where I can get it out of there. The tube costs about five bucks. Number five is the weather stripping falling off. So this whole weather strip around the door lasted for, I forget now, but maybe a day. And then it started falling off. So I went and bought a 3M uh, glue that's made for weather strip. And I'll, I'll link it below. The tube costs uh, $3.44 at Walmart. It's called 3M Black Super Weather Strip Adhesive. Number six, right inside here, this uh, channel that the um, glass sits in. And if, in case water gets in here, it drains out, comes down through here, and then escapes here. So on this side, I have that little cover. On the other side, it just uh, fell off. And so there's clearly an issue with the glue used while uh, making the cab of this excavator. Number seven, this one might be a little harder to see, but in between the stationary panel and the glass that moves, there's this little brush that goes up and down here. Now, I have it on this side. However, on the other side, it fell off. I could have just glued it in place, but I lost it before I glued it. For number eight, we're still with the cab, and we are on to this switch right here. Light switch which does not control any lights whatsoever. It controls the power going to the windshield wiper. Then you have an extra little control down there for actually turning it on. And then it controls power going to the fan, which you can also control with a separate switch or just leaving it in the on position and have the light switch control the on and off of the fan. So to fix it, you can swap this one out, I guess it would be switched out with a power on off switch for about 10 bucks or just put a label on there with a P-Touch labeler. Number nine, we're on to the thumb. So the thumb was an option that I chose to get right here. 
And the issue I have with it is that, that it slowly releases pressure. So I go ahead and grab something, squeeze down on it. And uh, after a few minutes, I have to reapply pressure or it will loosen up. And I don't, I don't know exactly how it happens because I don't see any hydraulic fluid leaking out anywhere. So I followed all the fittings and I just don't see it. So don't know what the cost to fix it is until I figure out the problem. For number 10, it should be known that I've never operated an excavator before, but this seems very strange to me. So if I am motoring forward using the tracks here like that or backwards, and I then decide to do multiple moves at once. Maybe I want to rotate my bucket or um, you know, extend the boom. It's not that it does it slowly, it's that it changes the direction of my travel. So I might be going straight forward and then I try to close my bucket and now we're making a right turn. So it's either that the plumbing is not set up correctly or it's just that the uh, the uh, hydraulic motor is not strong enough. I'll also drop in a couple of uh, bonus items here that are not really mistakes on the part of the manufacturer, but something that just annoys me. So it gets extremely hot inside of the cab here, even with the windows opens and the fans going, uh, now that it's summertime. And one of the main reasons is this wall right here gets super hot. You can also see this, all these holes right here. Heat comes in through here constantly. And if you sit in the chair and you drop your cell phone down here and it touches this wall for an extended period of time, it will just shut off because it's so hot. So I don't know if it would be a type of insulation that would be needed on the back of this. I'm not sure what the solution would be. Another item that annoys me is every fitting for every grease fitting on this rig has the same type of fitting. It's a nice little nipple sticking out on all of them. Except for one of my options that I paid for. And that is the thumb. Instead of having the nipple sticking out, right, it, you have to use this uh, different fitting. Now it comes with it, so it's not impossible to get it done. But when you have, I don't know how many I have, maybe 20 grease fittings and they're all the same, why not switch out that one and the one up here to be the same? It would make it so much easier to get this job done. Something else I would consider a design flaw similar to the grease fittings on the thumb is that there was no catch for the door. So when the door opened up, it would just slam metal against metal. So. I went ahead and went on Amazon and ordered one of these uh, RV door catches and install that here. It should be something like that or a strap across here, like a seatbelt strap, just uh, preventing it from opening up all the way. I will also include some damage that I have done to the excavator in my 50 hours of operation. Has nothing to do with the manufacturer, but uh, just me not doing this correctly one is that i have bent the thumb if you see here there's a gap right there and that was from holding onto a log then spinning around having the log hit uh, something else and then uh, tweaking my uh, thumb another one is if you saw the video of me flipping the excavator onto its side i was extremely lucky and just got some minor scratches here also bent one of the these attachment points up here which we used to lower the cab on to the excavator and then a tiny bit of the paint came off right here you can see it used to have a different color before they painted it and that's uh, it as far as oh no it's not I also bent this protective metal piece right here that sits in front of the main piston. And uh, yeah, makes sense that it's there because uh, 
I gave it a good dent when a log fell off, I believe. So that should about do it. I have uh, covered the items that I think should be improved on the excavator, issues I've had. But um, just to sum it up, I put 50 hours on it. It's been about maybe $50 in parts to keep it going. If you don't include the $100 of hydraulic uh, fluid that I had to uh, purchase, I still have plenty of that uh, pile, a uh, pail left. So overall, very happy with the still. I've done a lot of work, moved tons of logs and leveled some land. So I would still recommend it. Just know what you're getting into. Hopefully you're a pretty handy person.